Descent into Hell, written by Charles Williams in 1937, is a captivating novel that combines elements of psychological thriller and spiritual exploration. Set in the fictional English suburb of Battle Hill, the story delves into an outbreak of supernatural chaos. Williams employs a non-linear narrative structure, employing multiple shifts in time and perspective to tell the tale. The renowned poet and playwright, Peter Stanhope, extends an invitation to a local amateur theater group to perform his latest play in his garden. Led by the capable Mrs. Perry, the group begins rehearsals, but their interpretations of the play clash. Williams humorously critiques their inability to grasp the true essence of the play, as they stubbornly apply fashionable but misunderstood theories. One faction argues that the play centers around undifferentiated sex forces, while only one member, Pauline Anstruther, the actress portraying a nature spirit, sees the genuine value and meaning behind the work. However, Pauline carries a personal burden that distracts her. Since her childhood, she has been haunted by a doppelganger. During solitary walks, she occasionally spots her double in the distance, approaching her, only for it to vanish before their encounter. Recognizing Pauline's deep appreciation for his play, Stanhope forms a friendship with her. As Pauline diligently learns her lines, which happen to be Stanhope's poetry, she becomes increasingly attuned to his unconventional ideas. Eventually, she confides in Stanhope about her ongoing struggles with the doppelganger. To her surprise, Stanhope not only empathizes with her, but offers to shoulder the weight of her fears and sadness himself. Intrigued by this proposal, Pauline questions how it could be possible. Stanhope cites the biblical passage, Ye shall bear one another's burdens, Galatians 6 verse 2, and introduces a theological concept by Williams that through love, one person can assume another's emotional burdens. Stanhope, although unable to protect Pauline from encountering the doppelganger, assures her that he can alleviate her fear of it. He offers to bear the distress on her behalf, allowing her to be free from its burden. Accepting Stanhope's proposition, Pauline discovers that she is liberated from her lifelong fear. This newfound freedom transforms her relationship with herself and others, particularly with her grandmother, Mrs. Anstruther, whom Pauline has been living with since her parents' passing. As Mrs. Anstruther's health deteriorates, Pauline becomes her caregiver, realizing the depth of her grandmother's love. She opens up about the doppelganger and Stanhope's compassionate offer. During their conversation, they consider taking on the suffering of their ancestor, John Struther, who was executed as a heretic. Meanwhile, the spiritual energy unleashed by Stanhope's play has unsettling repercussions elsewhere in Battle Hill. The modern housing estate known as The Hill, built on the historical battlegrounds that gave the suburb its name, holds a lingering magnetism of death. This potent force continues to influence its residents. During the estate's construction in the 1920s, an unnamed laborer, overwhelmed by the despair of his impoverished life and drawn to the magnetism, took his own life by hanging himself from the scaffolding of a house. Trapped in a perpetual cycle of violence and self-loathing, his spirit remains tethered to the site. Lawrence Wentworth, an academic historian, now resides in the very house where the tragic event occurred. Wentworth has tangential connections to Stanhope's play, adding an intriguing layer to the unfolding events. The intertwining threads of personal and supernatural struggles deepen as the narrative progresses, delving into the consequences of the play's spiritual energy and the unresolved anguish embedded within Battle Hill. Wentworth, an academic historian with a fondness for historical advice and an unrequited passion for Adela Hunt, the proud and beautiful actress playing the heroine, finds himself consumed by jealousy. As his infatuation goes unreciprocated, Wentworth's mind turns inward, leading him to compromise his work. He begins distorting sentences, favoring peculiar meanings and clumsy constructions, manipulating evidence and words to support his own conclusions. This tendency to bend the truth becomes more characteristic of religious writers than historians. Rejected by Adela, Wentworth delves into the realm of black magic, creating a demonic double in her likeness, solely to serve his desires. Meanwhile, as Mrs. Anstruther nears the end of her life, she starts seeing the apparition of the deceased laborer at her window. Sensing that someone in Wentworth's house is in need, she urges Pauline to go there, despite Pauline's skepticism about her grandmother's confused state. Taking on the burden of the laborer's suffering, Pauline embarks on a fateful encounter with the supernatural. The novel concludes with Wentworth retreating further into his own private universe, 
Consumed by false scholarship and fixated on his magical servant lover, the narrator suggests that Wentworth has reached a point beyond salvation. Like his friends J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, esteemed writers who explore theological themes through non-realist fiction, Williams uses Descent into Hell as a contemplation on sin, unconditional love, redemption, and a satirical commentary on middle-class English life. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.